Alright guys, you will not believe this. It is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous. We are talking a seriously <coughs> over the top beautiful day. Here in the collapse of everything, it is the last day of summer 2024. The last day of summer 2024 and a glorious one it is. I guess we're supposed to have a glorious first day of fall 2024 tomorrow before the doom and gloom returns on Monday. But anyway, it is Saturday, September 21st, 2024, as we bid farewell to summertime officially. And uh, so as some of you know, I have had rodents on my mind <laughs> recently uh, both mice and rats and chippies and uh, rodents are taking an increasingly bigger toll on my life. Rodents have cost me probably three thousand dollars in the past 48 hours here at Bugs in a Jar Farm, but uh, so anyway, so I just obviously can't resist uh, with, with with rodents on my mind. Open open up Medium.com and find this article, and I've mentioned this person, D. K. Blair, D. K. Blair. I think DK is female, even with a photograph. I am unsure whether DK is male or female, not that it makes any difference. I wish I knew how old DK is, what generation uh, he or she is. Uh, not a boomer, making that clear, so uh, I might touch on. So this, this is kind of whatever one of these younger generations uh, you, you know rants about boomers that it's all our fault and then uh, particularly talking about capitalists but uh, DK just needs a few more years to figure out that it's not just capitalist but anyway uh I'm going to try to shut up because DK is a uh, got a pretty good head on his or her shoulders. And today's essay, is this a rat race or a slow methodical death march? Take it away, DK. Capitalism is sending us all on a one-way trip. Well overshoot, of which capitalism certainly is an ingredient, is sending us all on a one-way trip, but I will really try to shut up here and stick to DK's rant. Capitalism is sending us all on a one-way trip. In 1945, when the Allied forces were closing in on Berlin, and it began to dawn upon every Nazi camp commando that the jig was finally up. Many fled into the night like the criminally insane Cretans that they were. Yet there were hundreds who stayed on to force prisoners out of the camps in order to conduct what have come to be known as death marches. Why the German soldiers and SS risked life and limb to drive the last surviving Jews and prisoners to march in the bitter cold for miles and miles with not even the rationale of a clear destination in mind is one of the greatest and longest lingering mysteries of the entire Holocaust. <clears throat> How is it possible, we wonder, that the contempt the Nazis felt for the Jews, here's my 
Here, here's my computer doing this again. Uh, let me uh, let me find my place again. How is it possible? We wonder that the contempt the Nazis felt for the Jews trumped even the few remaining dregs of their logical reasoning right up to the very end, motivating them to conduct these death marches, which would result in the pointless demise of the weakest camp inmates and even risk the guards' own capture. To me, it seems as though they were determined to prove some kind of point, determined to enjoy the unhinged notion of their own superiority until the very last moment, even if it meant risking everything. Why? There is no why. Humans are, humans are beings with a myriad of complex emotions that become even more convoluted and enigmatic when confronted with the twin forces of groupthink and potential systemic collapse. In times of ideological combustion, when all you have believed in and built your life upon has been proven not only false, but morally bankrupt and criminally dangerous, <coughs> logic often gives way to absurdity. As the levels of absurdity begin to encircle every socio-political and economic decision made by the elite and pour through the circus of the mainstream media in our present epoch, a similar lunacy and sense of depravity has begun to grip society on a widespread scale, and the collateral damage is evident everywhere. Capitalists, as opposed to communists, socialists, and, and all the rest of the ist, capitalists see the clouds of ash on the horizon and the writing on the wall the same as the rest of us. They know the end is nigh. The contradictions of the system have held society in a checkmate position for so long we have entered a liminal space and there is literally nowhere to turn from here. Big Pharma are propagating global health disasters. Raytheon and the war industry are driving us all to the brink of World War III and oil tycoons are pushing our species to the precipice of extinction, and yet they will not stop. We're not dealing with rational entities anymore. You will find no logic here as hard and as desperately as you search. They will not stop simply because they cannot stop. Just as Nazis held fast to their delusional philosophies, even in the face of immediate annihilation, so too will the capitalists cling to their own delusions because that's all they know. They have been expounding and peddling self-serving propaganda for so long that now they have convinced themselves it is true, and they can no longer distinguish fact from fiction, nor decipher reality from amongst the Alice in Wonderland fantasy realm they have been ha inhabiting for the past several decades. In spite of the fact that productivity 
has soared over the past 30 years, workers not only get paid the same or decreasing wages, especially if you count for inflation, and the fact that automation, as well as other advances in technology, have rendered the 40-hour working week effectively redundant, the upper echelons still insist that wage serfs work themselves to the bone just to survive, sacrificing health, sanity, family, and community in the process. They are obstinate in their belief that the working class must be flogged into submission even if that means stalling our collective evolution and retaining humanity in some kind of surreal 1950s twilight zone. I think the twilight zone premiered in 1960, but anyway. The supposed rationale behind their abject exploitation of the masses belongs to a bygone era that is never coming back, and much of their rhetoric is so indefensible they know they can they know they can longer appeal they well they obviously they dropped a negative they know they can no longer appeal to sound intellectual acumen that's why they have come to depend upon political demagogues who spew and drivel unconscionable nonsense while whipping spectators, I mean voters, up into a frenzy. Just as the Nazi prison guards had no sound or coherent reason for instigating the death marches besides murderous insanity, the capitalist class today have no rationale for keeping humanity upon this road to ruination. They have all the resources, all the money, they have won. As the Leonard Cohen song says, uh, everybody knows the war is over, everybody knows the good guys lost. So, why won't they let people live in peace to try and solve the climate crisis and other catastrophes their greed has precipitated? They are simply too in love with the illusion of their own superiority. That's why they are not ready to give up living in the Hall of Mirrors. Those under the age of, say, 45 in certain South Asian countries understand better than most that what we are facing right now is a death march, not a rat race. In a rat race, there has to be some sort of incentive for the rats to run in the first place. Some prize, some goal, some pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. This generation, however, has absolutely no impetus to rush or race toward anything because there is nothing on offer anymore and all we seem to be hurrying towards is our own demise. The promises that were made to our parents and grandparents of a better life are nowhere to be found for us. They have literally vanished from the lips of politicians right before our very eyes. <coughs> now, to expect anything other than working yourself into an early grave just to make it by day after day is somehow considered selfish and ungrateful. The truth of to the, the, the youth 
of today are not only told to shut up and be happy with what they've got, which is nothing, they are reminded on a daily basis that there are no forthcoming solutions to any of the problems the boomers created. And, 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 and being a boomer, I, I just have to put in a weak defense for the boomers. I, I, you can't disagree uh, with DK on the historical fact that today's boomers are the ones that created uh, this problem. But what it implies, whenever, whenever you hear this little whine by these uh, younger generations, I really wish I knew how old DK was. Uh, you know, and I and I don't even know if decay is is, is a play on uh, letters or not. But anyway, what it implies, this whine always implies that. If people like DK had been born or of their generation, whatever their generation now coming up, uh, if they had been running the show instead of the boomers, the planet would not be in the shape that it's in. That capitalism would never have flourished if you know, today's 20-somethings had been in charge instead of their planet-eating uh, parents and grandparents. This is unadulterated horseshit. Uh, DK knows this is unadulterated horseshit. It has nothing to do about what generation of human you are. And it has almost nothing to do uh, with what eco economic system uh, uh, that you live under as a human. Humans are humans. Capitalists are humans. Boomers are humans. Gen Zers are humans. The problem is not boomers. The problem is not capitalists. The problem is not... Uh, what am I missing? Uh, boomers, capitalists. Uh, the, the problem is humans. But anyway, I will let DK... He will get back to DK's rant. Climate change? Wealth inequality? housing crises? None of those who claim to represent us have any real plan or intention to even attempt to tackle these issues, mainly because world politics is dominated by a gerontocracy that are going to die out in the next 10 years anyway. Terms like Hell Ocean, Hell Korea, and Bailon, Let It Rot in China have become commonplace among the youth in Asia because they recognize something that many of their counterparts in the West fail to, and that is that there is no ha <laughs> there is no ha <laughs> For this generation, and the only way to salvage any kind of happiness while you are still alive is to drop out of the death march and live in accordance with your own values and the things that give you joy. Thank you for reading this little tirade. For more on sociological issues, kindly check out The Horror of Special Economic Zones, Life After Capitalism, and 
moving yet again, living life from a suitcase. <laughs> Which is what this old boomer will be doing soon. But I hear the chainsaws cranking up in the neighborhood as everybody uh, gets their firewood in for the oncoming winter. Uh, I'm going to be taking down one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to be taking down 11 trees next week. 11 trees here at Bugs in a Jar Farm hitting the ground next week. Uh, get out there and enjoy the final hours of the summer of 2024 while you still can. Uh, don't know if I will feel like doing a Chronicle of the Collapse tomorrow, the day I turn 65 years old. The first day of fall, of the fall of 2024, your old Boomer Doomer will officially become a decrepit old fart tomorrow. So let me get out there and enjoy being middle-aged for a few more hours while I still can. And bye, guys. Yeah, still not. Uh <sighs>